Bruce Lee's untimely death at only 32 years old in 1973 has remained shrouded in mystery and speculation for more than 50 years. While the official cause was listed as a puzzling brain edema, his close friend and on-screen opponent Chuck Norris made a shocking revelation in 2018 about what he believes really led to the martial arts' legend's tragic demise. Join us as Facts First presents After 51 Years, Chuck Norris Reveals What Caused Bruce Lee's Death. Martial Arts Legends Bruce Lee, born Li Jun Fan on November 27, 1940, was a Chinese-American martial artist, philosopher, actor, and filmmaker who revolutionized the way martial arts were presented and practiced around the world. His philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, emphasizing practicality, flexibility, and personal expression over rigid tradition, shattered long-held beliefs and ushered in a new era of martial arts. Lee's early years were marked by hardship, as his family moved from the U.S. to Hong Kong when he was just months old. He faced numerous challenges growing up during the Japanese occupation, including being brutalized by street gangs, which spurred his initial interest in martial arts training. Under the tutelage of Ip Man, Lee became a prodigy in Wing Chun Kung Fu. His acting career began with minor roles as a child in Hong Kong, but it was his role as Kato in the American series The Green Hornet that brought Lee global fame. After the show's cancellation in 1967, he returned to Hong Kong to pursue his true passion, introducing his innovative martial art philosophy and acting in films showcasing realistic combat sequences. Chuck Norris, born Carlos Ray Norris, March 10, 1940, in Ryan, Oklahoma, is another martial arts legend whose path was unconventional. From impoverished roots and academic struggles, Norris found purpose after joining the U.S. Air Force, where he was stationed in South Korea and discovered his gift for martial arts. He immersed himself in Tang Soo Do, a Korean discipline, adding mastery of other arts like karate, judo, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. His skills were unsurpassed, earning him titles like six-time professional middleweight karate champion and Black Belt Magazine's Fighter of the Year in 1969. Hollywood soon beckoned, leading to roles showcasing his talents in films like The Wrecking Crew in 1969. The Friendship and Legendary Coliseum Battle Despite their divergent backgrounds, Lee and Norris formed a lasting bond over their shared passion for martial arts. They first met in 1967 at the All-American Karate Championships at Madison Square Garden, where the innovative Lee demonstrated his techniques and the disciplined Norris took home the championship. This sparked a two-year period where the future icons trained together frequently in Lee's Los Angeles backyard, exchanging philosophical ideas and honing their crafts. Their methodologies differed, but there was immense mutual respect. Norris admired Lee's avant-garde approach while incorporating Lee's pioneering high-kick techniques. So when Lee was making his 1972 film, The Way of the Dragon, retitled Return of the Dragon in the U.S., he personally recruited his friend Norris for a climactic role, the final boss villain Colt, who epically battles Lee's character Tang Lung in the Colosseum of Rome. The choreography of this legendary fight scene was masterminded by Lee himself. It brilliantly pitted his contemporary philosophical style of Jeet Kune Do against the fundamentals of Norris's Tang Soo Do base. The intense physicality was unfeigned as the two martial arts operatives performed their own stunts and choreography with unparalleled realism. While the characters were adversaries, the sequence celebrated Lee and Norris's real-life bond and mutual respect. Norris only agreed under the condition it would be a one-time deal, not wanting to be repeatedly depicted losing to Lee. Their Coliseum showdown has been cemented as perhaps cinema's most iconic and authentic martial arts battle. The Truth Behind Bruce's Tragic Death Just one year after the premiere of The Way of the Dragon, Bruce Lee died suddenly July 20, 1973 at age 32 in Hong Kong. His shockingly early death immediately launched a whirlwind of speculation, rumors, and theories trying to explain the puzzling circumstances. The official cause listed on his death certificate was a mysterious cerebral edema or brain swelling, but this medical explanation did little to quell the sense of confusion and desire for deeper answers. For over 50 years, Lee's premature passing has remained cloaked in unanswered questions and wild hypotheses. Some claimed he'd been accidentally struck with a fatal dim mock death touch from the movies. Others proposed more sinister theories of a family curse or that he was even assassinated by triad gang 
gangs threatened by his rising stardom. The freak occurrence of his son Brandon Lee dying similarly in 1993 after an accidental shooting added to the sense of dark mystery surrounding the Lee family legacy. But in 2018, Lee's close friend and Way of the Dragon co-star Chuck Norris finally stepped forward with insights he believed shed light on what truly happened. In an eye-opening interview, Norris revealed that in the months leading to Lee's death on the set of the film Game of Death, he'd been suffering intense headaches and migraines. A woman working on the production team named Betty allegedly provided Lee with some medication to try to alleviate the severe head pains. According to Norris, this prescription drug, combined with the painkillers and muscle relaxants Lee had been taking since 1968 to treat a previous back injury from a martial arts demonstration. Norris claims this disastrous adverse interaction between the different medications caused Lee's brain to fatally swell and hemorrhage. Norris stated directly, quote, The medication he had taken for his back injury, they reacted to each other and made his brain swell up and created an aneurysm or ruptured blood vessels in his brain. That's actually what happened. While the official cause is simply listed as the more general brain edema, Norris's disclosure provides a far more specific explanation rooted in potential pharmaceutical interactions. If true, this would shed light on just what fatal reaction may have occurred over 50 years ago. Regardless of the precise details, Lee's incredible impact on martial arts philosophy, revolutionary combat choreography, and iconic film career had already been firmly cemented. The Aftermath The death of Bruce Lee at just 32 sent shockwaves through the martial arts world and Hollywood. His unfinished film, Game of Death, was completed using existing footage and a lookalike actor. A sense of profound loss and unanswered questions lingered. In the years after, his wife, Linda Lee Cadwell, worked tirelessly to continue promoting his martial arts philosophy and teachings through publications, media, and the Bruce Lee Foundation. His philosophy of self-expression, pragmatism, and progress became even more impactful decades later. His son Brandon also died in 1993 after being accidentally shot on the set of the film The Crow. This compounded the Lee family's grief and immortalized both father and son as gone too soon under tragic circumstances. For Chuck Norris, the loss of his dear friend Bruce was incredibly difficult. However, Lee's determination and philosophy inspired Norris's own successful transition to becoming a major film star and action hero into the late 70s and 80s. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Chuck Norris's revelation about Bruce Lee's death? Let us know in the comments section below.